From the dawn of our time, the heart cry of the Father was to reconcile man to Him. Jesus came to forge the way for us, to bridge the divide, to become the door for us to enter our Father's kingdom. Therefore I shall repent and turn to Him. A new day has begun, a second chance. Surely as the sun rises and sets, as the waves continually break upon the shore, and as the seasons change, God upholds us all in His mighty hand. In Him I find my hope, a hope unwavering, steadfast. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope, without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. We are energized by faith, motivated by love, and have unwavering hope that Jesus will return for us. We are dedicated to go about our Father's business, unwavering. Our hearts are anchored in this hope, the doors of heaven are flung wide open for us to enter this eternal, unshakable kingdom. So we will stand firm. We will not be moved. We will excel in His work in unwavering hope. Let us therefore rise up. Let us stand and be counted. Here I am, Lord. Use me. We will shout His word to the corners of the earth. We will put the sickle to the harvest. We will bring His light where there is darkness. We will prophesy His life where there is death and shout it out over every dry and dead bone to come together and breathe. For our God is the one and only true God, the giver of breath and life. In Him our hope is found. Unwavering hope. Good morning, Community Family Church, all our friends watching with us on media. Baie welkom by hierdie speciale Vadersdag diens. Ons wil vandag al die uh, paas, ons aardse vaders wil ons eer en dankie sê vir al die goeie werk wat hulle doen en uh, net hierdie dag speciaal maak vir hulle. Die Heer het een wonderlijke woord op my hart geleef om met jou als een pa uh, te deel. Dalk het jy nie jou eie kinders nie, maar jy is soos een pa vergier vir baie ander kinders, wat deel is van jou vriendenkring of jou eie familie. So het elke man een of ander rol as een vader, as een pa, wat hy wel uh, verrig. So we want to say that we want to honor the fathers today. You know the word honor literally means to honor, to respect, because the father fulfill his obligation. As a father in the home, he's doing his part. We bring him respect and honor. The word honor also refers to respect that leads to keeping your agreement. And that is the dads. And we want to thank God. Ek wil net bid dat die Heere jou nog een jaar sal seen. Dat die Heere jou nog een jaar sal bewaar. En jou nog een jaar sal vestig aan hy rol en hy roeping as een pa wat hy op jou leven het. Jy weet, soms as pa voel ons moeg, ons raak ook moeg, die tyd wat dier ons is, met al die druk van die leven op ons, soms as pa voel een mens te veel verantwoordelikheid op hom, en kyk na alles en wonder, jyre, hoe gaan dit eindig, hoe gaan ek hier deur kom? Soms as pa het ons die financiële druk, 
nie daar kom jou eie bezigheid aan die gang te hou nie, maar ook om jou familie vir hulle voorsiening te bring. Alles is extra druk wat op paas is, en soms voel mens moedeloos, en daar is niks daarmee fout om nou en dan moedeloos te voel nie. Maar ons moet ons self herinner, dat ons kracht kom van die Heere, en dat Hy ons Vader is, ons Himmelse Vader, wat vir ons alles gee wat ons nodig het, om hierdie rol te vervul, ons roeping as paas, wat een voorrecht is dit. Ek wil vir jou sê, soms voel een pa ook richtingloos, en selfs afgemat, en um, wanneer ons moeg is, kom ons ris, wanneer ons voel, waar is die richting, waan toe verder, kom by die Heere uit, hy is die een wat jou as een man, as een pa sal versterk en vir jou sal by jou handvat en weer leid. Onthou, die Heere sien jou as, as een pa, hy sien jou as sy sien, hy noem ons sy seens, en um, hy weet dat jy een waardevolle rol vervul in die levens van jou familie, en die vriende, en die familie, verder groter familie om jou, jy het so waardevol, jy is so belangrik vir jou rol, en die goeie nies is, as een pa figuur, is dit nooit dat jy te oud raak nie, um, ek luister nou die dag na statistieke, wat sê, dat 85% van mense wat afgetree is, mans, paas, voel dat hulle geen doel meer in die lewe het nie, en dis nie waar nie, dit is juist die ouwe paas, wat die ervaring van die lewe het, wat soveel kan insit, en soveel kan terugsit, en dit is so kostbaar, Nou die dag was ons by een vergadering van ons netwerk, Cotton, Church of the Nations, en um, ons leier Tony Fitzgerald, hy is nou al diep in die 70, ek vraag vir hom, hoe lyk die volgende 10 jaar vir jou? Hy sê vir my, my rol nou, as een ouwe pa, as een ouwe geestelike vader, is om die jonger geslag aan te moedig, to cheer them on, en hy sê, dis vir my so lekker rol. So ek wil vir die ouwe paas, die ouwe paas, die ouwe paas groeikies sê, dat jou rol is geweldig belangrijk. Jy is daar om die jonger geslag aan te moedig, aan te vier, en te bemoedig, en, en rechtig net te sê, die Heer is getrouw, jylle gaan een wonderlijke toekomst binnen, as jonger mense. En dit is ons rol. So as paas wil ons vandag sê, vir al die paas, Ons eer jylle, ons respecteer jylle, mag die jyre jylle reiklik sien in hierdie dag en speciaal die jaar wat nog voorle. Let us open and pray. Father, on this special Father's Day, I come and I bless every dad listening to the sound of my voice. We thank you, Lord, that your strength and presence will just fill every dad. The concerns and me, maybe the worries as a dad over the family and the situation that he's in that might not be favorable. I ask, Lord, that you would just come in this time as we minister, that you will strengthen, bring faith and new hope and breakthroughs in the lives of every dad listening to this sermon this morning. In Jesus' wonderful name, Amen. Gesientes alipas.
God is seeing the dads still as faithful men. A great dad, indeed. You as a dad is still embracing your God-given role every day as a father. You know, you're still making impact in the lives of your children, your grandchildren, helping them to build their lives. Dad, I want to say that you are the one whispering to your son, your daughter, you can do it. Praying for them in secret, you know, just with heaven's help, praying for them and, and be there to support them and watch over them and love them. I want to say that you love them even in difficult times, your children. And you know that difficult times is necessary uh, to shape the skills of each young person. So we need to help and navigate them through the difficult times as well and just be there for your children you as his dad still believe in your children you love them you care enough for your children uh, and, and, and to give them the time and the energy and to invest finances in them just to cheer them on and for that this morning we want to honor the dads and thank you for your year of faithful um, work as a dad in fatherhood concerning your children. God bless you. And as I said, may the Lord spare, bless, and, and use you even greater, even more in the year that is ahead of us. You know, the Department of Health has indicated to us, listen to these stats, that 63% of youth suicide are from fatherless homes. That 90%, 9-0 of runaway children is because of fatherless homes. 80%, 8-0 of anger problems in the lives of children is because of fatherless homes. And 71% of high school dropouts is also because of fatherless homes. Look at the importance, just look at the stats, the important work you as a dad fulfill in the lives of your children by just being there, by just supporting them, by just loving them, you know, just to make them realize I am here. Doesn't matter how young or how old your children are, just to say I am still here, I am praying for you, I love you. Just because of that, you are fulfilling a God-given important role in society today. So I want to say again, we as dads care because we love. And because of love, we give. Love to give of ourselves, of our time, as our energy, and also our finances. And we will just do it over and over again. It's just in us. In John 3, 16, the Bible says, the A part, For God so loved the world that He gave. You know, as we as dads give, we actually parallel the actions of God as Father, our Heavenly Dad, in the lives of our children. So your work is so important and valuable when it comes uh, to family God was willing to sacrifice His Son in order to show His love for us. And that's exactly what we do. Sometimes we don't say that we love you, but our actions is there. It is how we give of ourselves that really show the love that we have and that we really love to a place of sacrifice. As paas vir ons kinders sal ons altyd daar wees, om hulle te herinner dat iemand hulle lief het. Genoeg omgee dat hy sy alles gee, tot die punt van opoffering. En jy weet, hier is een belangrike punt, ek luister vir ochend na een gesprek, dat geld kan nie alles koop nie. En dalk het jy nie geld om vir jou kinders te gee wat hulle dalk wil hee nie, of dalk nodig het tot die punt nie, maar hier is die sene, dier jou self beskikbaar te maak, gee jy vir jou kind die beste, en het kost jou niks. Hierdie persoon praat vir ochend van, hy het die dag afgevat by sy werk, pa van veertig, en hy het vir sy sien gesê, het was een vrijdag, kom ek en jy, sy sien was nog nie in die school nie, maar kom ek en jy gaan bykie uit vandag. Ons gaan loop bykie rond, hy swaai hem op die swaai in die parkie, hulle gaan stap verder in die veld, langs die see, die marag het sy pa om 
gevat vir een pizza bij een restaurant, en op pad huis toe, het hulle weer by die parkie gestop, en weer omgeswaai, en wiekies het hy saam sy sien, in die, in die rondom talie gerei, en al die kinderspeelgoed wat daar is, en die aand toe sit hy sy sien in die bed, en hy gee om een soen, en hy sê, um, ek is lief vir jou, en toe hy uitstap, toe die pa by die deur kom, toe sê sy sien vir hom, pa, hierdie was die beste dag van my leven, en hier weer die pa sê, dit het om net een pizza gekost, so dat om een sien te wees as een pa, beteken nie, jy moet altyd geld heen nie, kom ons verander ons denken, kom ons maak ons self beskikbaar, vir ons kinders, en dan is jy die beste pa, soms is die belangrijkste ding, wat ons ons kinders kan gee, is net van ons self, die tyd, en dit is so belangrijk vir die kind, en die fondatie sal vir altyd een fantastische verhouding tussen pa en kinders vestig. I want to show you five simple elements of a biblical father, um, and it's really simple, and let us consider these things, and let us make it part of our everyday life as a dad, in 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13 and 14, the Bible says this. He says, be on guard. In other words, be alert. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. And do everything with love. Is it not a fantastic script? Nie? Wees waaksam. Staan vast in geloof. Neem moed. Wees moedig. Wees sterk. En in alles wat jy doen, laat dit in liefde geskiet. Paulus beskryf in hierdie gedeelte, een ware man, pa in die koninkryk van God. En so kom ons kyk na hierdie vijf areas, en hoe ons dit prakties kan deelmaak van ons elke dag lewe. En dit is so belangrijk, dat ons kinders die voorbeeld, uh, goeie voorbeeld sien, so dat hulle ena, want hulle getrouwd is, en hulle kinders het, dit weer kan, uh, as voorbeeld kan lewe, so dat die geslag wat daar hulle kom, ook uh, geseend en in die weer van die Heere kan groot word. So the first thing we will look at is to be watchful. In other words, be careful to consider circumstances and sequences. Ek onthou baie jare terug, dan kom het op die plek waar hulle vriende kies. En so wat ons gedoen het, ons het een kombi gehad, so ons het altyd gesê, ons sal die kinders rondrui, ons sal hulle na sport toe rui, ons sal hulle optel en rondrui, selfs die klomp maaikies, en hierdie een dag, ons het in Durban weggerui, tygervallei achter ons, en die kombi is vol meisie vriendinne van Carla, en een van die meisies achter, praat van dinge, wat glad nie vir kinders bedoel is om te luister nie, en onmiddellik het ons geweet, want ons was waaksam, hierdie is een gevaarlike connectie as een vriendin, so paar daar daarna het ons net genoem, pas op vir die maaikie, um, haar invloed is nie goed nie, en dier ons kinders net so dier te kyk in hulle lewe, betrokken te wees, het ons hulle gelei, gerig, in die richting in die weer van die Heere. So it's important to be watchful and also uh, to watch circumstances and sequences in their lives. You also as a dad, sometimes you need to look at their phones. Yes, especially as teenagers. What are they watching? What is on their phone? You have to be watchful. That's your responsibility as a dad. Watch and pray, the Bible says. En um, dit is so belangrijk dat ons hier, hierdie deel doen. Ons dank die Heere, dat soos ons die lewe doen, saam met die kinders, het ons gewaak oor hulle, om hulle na die beste van ons vermoe, in die richting en die weer van die Heere te hou. En ek kan met blijdschap sê, al twee ons kinders dien die Heere volheid. Hulle gaan kerk toe, niemand vraag hulle om kerk toe te gaan nie. As ons met Stefan praat, dan hoor ons nie, hy was by die kerk en het was so lekker gewees. So dit maak een ouwe hart, een pa so bly, die grootste sien wat ons kan ontvang as ouwers, as een pa, is om nou te sien hoe jou kinders groot is en hoe hulle die Heere dien. So that comes because we are watchful. The second point we see in Paul's writing is this, stand firm in the faith. Now, this is the first thing. You as a dad needs to be the example. They look at us. They study us. They actually get excited when there's tense situations in the house and how you will handle it. 
So kom ons wees een voorbeeld voordat ons kinders probeer voor sê wat en hoe om die lewe te doen. Kom ons wees een voorbeeld vir harde werker, daar by jou werk, jy werk hard en getrouw. Kom ons wees een voorbeeld wat lief is vir jou vrou, hulle ma, wat met respect hulle hanteer, so dat hulle nie net hoor nie, maar ook sien hoe dit is om een pa te wees in die familie. Hulle kyk self na ons gedrag as voorbeeld van paas, wanneer ons saam vriende keier. Raak jy dronk, raak jy warm, om warm te raak van een drankie te veel is ook verkeerd. Hulle sien hoe ons die Heere dien. Hulle sien hoe jy bid, hulle sien hoe jy bybel lees, hoe jy lief is vir die Heere, lief is vir jou familie, hoe jy lief is vir die Jesus' kerk. Die beste manier om in geloof te staan, is om die woord te lees en dit te doen. Ek kan daar ook, ons het net die kerk begin, 21 jaar gelede. Stefan was nog voor school, hy was in die kleederskool, en ek het een ochend vroeg, in die kantoor, waar die een sitkamer van die huis was, het ek gekniel by die stoel, en daar had ek gebid. My oe was toe. Ek weet nie hoe lang het was na dit nie, maar toe ek opkyk, my oe oopmaak, toe het Stefan een stoel, wat ook daar was, by die stoel gaan kniel, en hy het net so biddend oor die stoel gewag, want hy het nou gesien, dis hoe ek dit doen. En dit was so wonderlik om het te sien, en ek besef, as een voorbeeld was paas, is dit so belangrik om die voorbeeld elke dag te stel. So the third important principle we learn from the word of God as fathers is this, to be courageous. You know, living for God is not for cowards. Doing what is right all the time requires courage. Al is jy die enigste een wat richting opbeweeg, staan vast. Staan vir die woord. Ek sal eerder die Heere behaag, as om een hele land te probeer behaag, of my hele gemeenskap, of my hele vriendeking probeer behaag. Maar wees sterk, en wees moedig, en staan vir wat reg is. Dis een ware pa, iemand wat staan vir die woord. Een man het een dag vir my sy getuienis gedeel, hy is een boekhouwer gewees, en hoe hy gevra is om 1 rand 20 sy krediet af te skrywe. Sy na die woord, die maatskapie het die klient die 1 rand 20 geskuld. En hy het vir sy baas gesê, ek weier, want ons skuld die geld vir die klient, ek gaan dit nie afskryf nie, jy kan maar iemand anders vraag. En jy weet, die man was so hoog gerespekteer as een volk van die staan wat hy gemaakt het, is hy bevorder tot die top van almal in die maatskapie en hy het alles oorsien. Net die eienaar was boom gewees. Maar dit het alles gekom oor 1 rand 20. Kan jy dit glo? Ja, and so God is asking of us to be courageous. You see, our kids are looking at us, they studying us to see if we're really going to lead them and love them in spite of. And it's so important that we as a family also come to church together on Sundays, train them in the ways of God. The word says, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. The fourth principle is this, be strong as a dad. Dit verwijs na ons innerlijke sterkte. Om sterk te wees, beteken en verwijs letterlijk na morele kracht, morele moed morele sterkte. Dit beteken om sterk te wees in wat reg is en altyd te doen wat reg is. En wat is reg? Die woord van die Heere is waar en reg. So being strong is to have moral power, moral principles, always choose right when there's a decision between right and wrong behavior in front of you. In other words, our proper conduct is always God's way. And that's what it means to be strong. To be strong, to follow the word, to obey the word. Jy sien, het kom weer terug na die voorbeeld wat ons stel. En onthou in die begin van die preek, het ons gekyk na statistieke oor huise waar nou nie paas is nie. En het kom werkelijk terug na die belangrikheid van die rol wat die pa in die familie en sy kinderse lewe speel. The fifth one is this, do everything in love. I love that. And that's why we do what we do. Um, that's why we work so hard. That's why we give so much. That's why we make time and give our energy 
it is such a blessing. Jy sien wanneer ons by ons kleinkinders speel, ons is nou al opa en oma, gaan ons en ons sit letterlik op die grond en speel saam met hulle. Michelle sal saam met hulle pop speel en thee drink en hulle maak koos. Ek sal weer met hulle rol en stoei en hulle optel. Jy weet en kom ons maak whoopie, die type speeliekie speel. Maar ons is daar op die grond. Ons doen dit want ons is so lief vir hulle. En ons prijs die Heere vir die voorbeeld en die voorrecht om my opa en my oma te kan wees. So soms is dit die belangrikste en om liefde te gee en liefde te wees. As een man is ons geleer om te sê, ons is sterk, ons wil nie ons emoties wees nie. Maar soms is het nodig dat ons eerlik is met ons kinders. En soms, meeste van die tijd as ons weet ons het verkeerd opgetree, moet ons vir hulle ook om verskoning vraag, want hulle kyk na ons elke dag. So ons is lief vir ons kinders, dit beteken ons gee werkelijk om en verstaan dat ons acties hulle levens affecteer. So ek bid dat die Heere jou sien dat jou acties as een man, as een pa, geweldig positief en goddelik sal wees om een wonderlijke inpak op die levens van jou kinders te kan los. Jy sien, Jesus self het gesê, dit is beter om te gee as om te ontvang. En dit is waar liefde inkom. Liefde gaan oor gee. Onthou ons opening skrif gedeelte is, want so lief het God die wereld gehad, dat hy gegee het. Dit is waar oor dit gaan om pa te wees. Die beste geskenk vir ons kinders is om van ons self te gee. Ons klein kinders, tyd te spandeer met hulle. Dit begin dier te sê dat jy lief is vir hulle. Ons het van kleins af, van geboorte af, sê ons van ons kleinkinders, ons kinders en ons kleinkinders, ons is so lief vir hulle. I love you. En hulle al twee sê dit nou al terug. Anja en Jana, uit hulle eie sal somme na ons toe hardloop en sê, Opa, oma, I love you. Want hulle volg jou voorbeeld. So, as een pa is dit belangrijk dat jou kinders hoor dat jy hulle lief het. Self as ons met ons volwasse kinders praat, sê ons aan die einde van elke gesprek, Ek is lief vir jou, ons hou aan daarmee, want dit is so belangrik om alles in liefde te doen. You see, many dads do not want to say that they love their children, because they feel ashamed of the example that they have set in the family. Listen, ask them to forgive you, and tell them that you love them. But also tell them that you are proud of them. Tell them that you appreciate them. By just doing these simple things, by speaking to them when they have the opportunity, will change their lives. And that's all part of fatherhood. You know, this day, Father's Day, we get presents. It might be socks or a tie or whatever it might be. But by doing what we've discussed so far, as you apply it in your life and you be that example as a dad, the gift that you will receive in return will far exceed the physical gift that they're giving you on this. Again, I want to encourage you as dads, be there for your children. Don't miss family events. Don't break your promise to them. I pray today as we end the service that you will be watchful as a dad, that you will stand firm in faith, that you'll be courageous, that you will be strong and do everything in love in their lives. Do not let yesterday define you. Whatever happened yesterday, whether good or bad, it's behind us. But let today transform you, the ministry of the word, the desire in your heart, the yearn to follow the ways of God as true fathers to our children. So today will transform your life. Today is a new day. Praise God, His mercies are new every day. It's a new beginning. You can be that dad because you are the only dad for your children. No one else can take your place. No one else can represent you. You are the dad and you're still alive on earth. So use that opportunity. Be thankful. Uh, be part of their lives and be a blessing to your children. That is our highest calling. You know, one day we will retire as dads from our workplace, and then we will be at home. And then you have a lot of time to visit and spend time with your children. And that is what it's all about. It comes back and comes down to family. Um, I listened to a testimony or someone the other day that was so busy, and now they've retired. 
a very well-known singer in our country. And uh, this is what he said. He said, I enjoy every day. All I do is plan my next visit between my five children. Some of them in South Africa, some of them in Australia, and some in America. He says, before you watch, uh, it is time to go on that journey to visit this child. So they literally visit their children right through the year. He says, and that is what it's all about when you are retiring. So praise God for the circle of life. We start in a family when the, our children are born. And we do the 20, 30 years and 40 years together. By the time you retire again, you come back to that family and just be connected and still be their dad. So transformation will always start because of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. As a man, when you have a personal relationship with Jesus every day, that means daily you make time to read His Word. Daily you make time to pray, to talk to the Lord. That's all you do. And then you do the Word. You live the Word. That's how you do it. It will not only transform your life, but it will also transform your children's life for good. Being a dad is God's gift to you, fathers. The legacy that we leave is our gift to our children, a legacy of love, a legacy of staying connected, part of their lives. Finally, we honor today our Heavenly Father, the ultimate dad. He is truly the ultimate dad, and we point to Him and say, He is my daddy. What a privilege to have a Father in heaven, a true example of great love and care, and always there for us. His wonderful promises in His Word are all yes and amen over our lives. Let us pray together. Father, thank you so much for this blessing today, listening to your Word. We open our hearts, we have received, and I pray that you will water the Word through the Holy Spirit in us, and just make us realize, not about the sad and the bad in the past, but to make us realize what a privilege to be alive today, to be connected, to be a dad to our children. Thank you that you bless every dad today with health, with provision, with protection. Bless them in the year to come, Father. Lead and guide them with heaven's provision and heaven's blessing every day. I pray in Jesus' name over the dads. Amen. Just before we close, I would love to and you to declare the following declaration with me as we end this sermon. I want all the dads to make this declaration with me. Will you do it in your heart or maybe out loud, but just follow as I will lead you through this. I declare today on this Father's Day before God to take full responsibility for myself my wife and my children. I will love them, protect them, and I will serve them. I will teach them the ways of God as a spiritual leader. I will be faithful to my wife. I will love and honor her. I will willingly lay my life down for her as Christ did for me. I will teach my children to love God with all of their hearts, minds and strength. I will train them to honor authority and live responsible. I will confront evil. I will pursue justice. I will love mercy. I will treat others with kindness, respect and compassion. I will work diligently to provide for the needs of my family. I will speak truthfully and keep my promise. I will forgive those who wronged me. I will reconcile with those I have wronged. I will walk in integrity as a dad answerable to God. I will seek to honor God, obey His word, and do His will. I declare this, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What a wonderful declaration, isn't that? So dads, have a wonderful day. I know you're going to be spoiled and just enjoy the privilege of being a dad. If you would like to dedicate your life to Christ, just give your life to Him anew, afresh today. Just follow the prayer that will come up on the screen right now. 
and let us know. Come to one of our in-person services. Let us serve God together. Remember, the end of all things is close by. Jesus is about to return. We are truly living in the last days. Serve God with all of your heart. We love you. We see you soon. God bless. Bye-bye. Dear Father God, Today I surrender my life to you. Thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for my sin and for raising him back to life so that I can spend eternity with you. I am now your child. You are now my Father, and your Holy Spirit now lives in me. Today is the first day of the rest of my life. I love you. Amen. These are the faces. The faces of a generation of kids in turmoil. You know them. They are our children, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, the friends of our kids and kids of our friends. They all come from different places and cultures, yet share one thing in common. They're all seeking truth, encouragement, love, and guidance. Above anything, they all yearn for a blessing from their father or a man who can make a difference in their life. Men, your words carry the power to build up or to tear down. Tell them who they are Tell them they have meaning Listen to their hopes Listen to their dreams Bless them from your heart Bless them with your hands Let them know you love them And that God has a plan Turning today And Blessing of what Father said.